let me uh let me go ahead and pull pull everything up here. So let me open up a notepad real quick. <laughs> My handy dandy notepad. So let's see, put it here. All right, and I do want to give credit. Uh, one of my friends who like inspired me to explain it in this particular way is my friend Nice. He used to play League of Legends, but now he's playing Fortnite. But I mean, if you want to watch Fortnite, you can check him out at twitch.tv slash Nice. But, or you could check out his new YouTube as well. I think it's bingegaming.tv is his YouTube channel and he also has the explanation of how to split push uh, but some of the ideas and concepts are very similar I'll be explaining it in a different way of course from my perspective as streamer player he is explaining it you know for all players but uh, I will be using some ideas and concepts from his channel so it's a shout out to Nice. Uh, you know, I'm taking, uh, I have his permission. He gave me permission a while ago to kind of explain, uh, uh, to explain split pushing in this way. And again, all props to Nice for, for his content. Uh, rip him playing League of Legends, by the way. He is now a Fortnite streamer. But anyways, let's talk about the, about split pushing. So... <clears throat> You guys notice I have a big white screen here. We're going to fill it up with words. Let me actually uh, make the words a little bigger. So let's look at the font. Put this to like 24. Um, maybe Times New Roman. That's the most readable font. Let's put it like 48. Okay. Number one. What is the number one... Like, first thing you want to do when you are split pushing. It's pretty simple. You want to first look to 1v1 your opponent. But, what if you can't 1v1 your opponent? Right? Like, let's say... Your opponent is stronger than you and can just straight up kill you. Or they're playing some kind of brain dead tank like Shen or Malphite and you just don't have the damage to kill them. What do you do? What's the next step? What is the next step if you can't do this? Yes, the next step, exactly, you got it RB Frosty, can you get turret damage in his face? So there are some opponents where if you can't 1v1 your opponent, you know, something like Malphite or Maokai, like you, you, you just can't die them. Sometimes you can just walk up in their face, auto attack their turret a couple times, and then back out and wait for the next minion wave. Right? If the answer is no, what do we do next? What's the next step? Oh yeah, let me let me take off the uh Yeah, I have no chat box, that's good. Yep, Emperor Tiberius has it right. We are going to take jungle camps. Slash ward. They kinda go, they kinda go together.
Nope, you don't rotate yet. So, the first step. We're looking to 1v1 our opponent, right? We're going to look to kill him, dive him, take his turret. But, if we cannot do that, we need to look to try to get turret damage to his face. If we can't even do that, like say they have, it's like uh, Shen or Galio, something like can taunt, or they just straight up do too much damage to you. Then after you shove in the wave, go ward. Go take jungle camps. Trinomir is really mobile, can take jungle camps very fast. Even if you can't get a lead on your opponent by, by killing him and taking his turret, you can get a lead on your opponent and set the enemy jungler behind by taking his jungle camps, you know, taking his experience, getting some effective wards down so that you can see, so, see people on the way to your lane. But, I mean, what if you can't take jungle camps? For whatever reason. Can't take jungle camps. Either they are gone, the enemy jungler already took them, or the enemy jungler is is there. Like, and you're you're you could get 2v1. What do we do next? Exactly. You can either be patient. You have a couple of options here. Be patient and wait out the pressure. So wait until the enemy jungler leaves. Or wait if, if the enemy jungler isn't there that you already had taken the jungle camps. And you already got some good words down. Just be patient. Wait for the next wave to come up. Rinse and repeat. Or... I'm going to put a slash here. Or, if there is a flank opportunity. So, a flank opportunity. If you have the option of being able to flank your opponent. And out, basically, you shove in top. There's no jungle camps up. Like, you know, you don't need a ward. Or you don't have any wards, or you already have wards down. But you see an opportunity where your top laner is covering the wave, or whoever's matching you in the split push. And you see an opportunity to engage a fight, and start a, a 5 versus 4. You know, before your your the person split pushing against you can rotate. Then you absolutely take that opportunity. You know, the flank opportunities, uh, when you take those, is completely determined... By your experience with the game. Can you make that flank? Can you can you make the play? My right That's arm your knowledge of the champion. Than my left arm. <laughs> Yo, El Curion Exodus. Hey, thank you for the subs of Twitch Prime Dude. I appreciate it. What about neutral objectives? Yes, that's true. So it's like, let me go back. So it's not only neutral camps. Like uh, jungle camps and ward. But maybe other objectives. Uh, this would be Rift, Dragon, and Baron. If if you have the opportunity. So I, I forgot to mention that. Good catch, Twitch chat. But yeah. Neutral objectives are, uh, are important as well. If you have the opportunity to get them. So... You know, use these three tips. Can you 1v1 your opponent? If yes, 1v1, like, look to 1v1 him. Obviously, you have to be, you have to be careful about getting collapsed on. So, what's, you know, let's, let's go back to the beginning. What's the first thing we have to consider before pressuring objective? What is the first thing to consider before pressuring? Is your team in a position to pressure? <clears throat> you 
It's it's not even ward. It's not even vision. I've sometimes like looked to one v one my opponent without vision. Because if I can 1v1 my opponent, and even if I get collapsed on by the enemy team, if my team is in a position to pressure either a turret or a baron or something else, my team can make it worth for me. So if my team is in a position to pressure, then if I look to 1v1 my opponent, and maybe I do get a kill, maybe I do kill a big uh, my opponent, but the enemy jungler kills me, or the enemy mid laner kills me, I bring two people over to me, and if my team's in a position to pressure either mid turret, top turret, uh, bot turret, or you know just some objective on the map, dragon, baron, overall that trade is going to be worth. Because my, my death, you know, their one kill, is not worth as much as a turret, as a dragon, as a, a baron, like anything. So, let's, let's go over everything. So, before we even pressure, before we even start our pressure on the split push, is your team in a position of pressure? It's the first question we ask ourselves. Then, when we're actually in that, in that situation where we're split pushing and we're looking to pressure, can we 1v1 our opponent? If no, can you get turret damage in his face? If you can't do either of those things, you can't look to dive your opponent, you can't get turret damage in his face, go to step two. Step two, take jungle camps, go ward, neutral objective, say you could, you know, solo dragon, maybe, like, if you're splitting top lane, maybe solo the Rift Herald fits up. You know, those are options. And for whatever reason... If you can't take jungle camps, either the enemy jungler is there, or the jungle camps are just straight up not there, go step three. Step three, you have two options. You can be patient, wait for the next wave, and wait for an opportunity to arise where you can actually look for a flank opportunity to go flank the enemy team. Uh, you know, or you could just like kind of wait for the next wave. So be patient or look or, you know, take the flank opportunity. And if there's no flank opportunity and, and we instead we choose to be patient, then we go back to step one. Maybe the first time around we couldn't 1v1 our opponent. But now maybe his, his mana bar is low. Maybe we ended up getting a good trade on him. Stuff like that. <clears throat> so yeah. This is uh, my explanation and guide for the complete guide to split pushing. So take a look at here. I'll leave it up for a second. Kind of just take, take yourself through, through these three things. But the most important question you have to ask yourself before you're split pushing is, is your team in a position to pressure? Most important thing. All right, let me go ahead and take all this. Let me close that out. <clears throat> all right, guys. We are in our advanced guide to Trinmere. Slash split pushing. We have gotten this far. Currently, we have talked about uh, some advanced tips and tricks that the common Trinomir main does not know. We talked about practice for good mouse control, good screen control, uh, so for while you're in lane phase. Talked about like when you should absorb information. Taking a look at the map, pressing tab, looking at CS, looking at levels. Uh, taking a look at HP bars across the map. And we have just gone over the complete guide to split pushing. So the next advanced step that we need to take as Trin remains, how do we punish auto-filled players? So you get you get that you get that one guy. He's a support main, right? And he gets auto-filled top. 
He picks Maokai, and he plays as safe as he possibly can. How can we punish? He's playing a tank. He's playing back. He's not trading with you. He's playing as safe as he possibly can. How can we punish? We have multiple options to punish this autofilled player. <clears throat> there are going to be a lot of mistakes that they make. A lot of mistakes that we can force them to make. But let's go off this premise. We are assuming that the autofilled player is playing safe. If the autofilled player is playing aggressive and you're not autofilled, right? You are top main. You should straight up beat that autofilled player. And if you're not beating an autofilled player as a top main, then you need to look at yourself and say, hey, I need to improve because I should be beating this guy, right? So maybe go check out tips from my intermediate or beginner's guide and, you know, start, start again from there. But we are against an autofilled player, a player who does not play top lane. How do we punish them? The first thing you can do to punish them is wave manipulation. How can we manipulate waves so that we can punish this player? Well, let me go ahead and take a look at my OPGG real quick. And uh, let me see if I have a recent game against an autofilled player. Let me take a look. Whoops, that was the notes for this thing. All right, there we go. So, fog for win one. OPGG, you guys can see I'm challenger, 384 LP. Let's take a look. <clears throat> um, all right. So here's a matchup. Uh, I was playing against Anori top, and Anori, if you can look here, he's a he's he's master tier, three hundred fifty four LP. So he's a good player, but he's out of field. He's a jungle main. How can we punish this guy? Let's take a look at this game. So this game we went nine three and seven. Let's go to my League of Legends client. Let's take a look. How do we punish this kind of player? You know, the first big thing you do, wave manipulation. If they look to fight you, just straight up outplay them because you, you're the better, like you should be the better player since they're autofilled. Or third, if they're playing so safe and not fighting you, and they're playing like a brain dead tank like Malphite, Malkai, Scion, stuff like that. Get perfect CS and out rotate them across the map. Use the advantage that your champion has, Trinimir, to out rotate the enemy opponent across the map. <coughs> so let's take a look at this game. You know, going into this game, I recognize I'm against an autofield player. So I know, and I swapped with my support. My support is a, is a top lane main. He was so nice as to give me uh, top lane. So since I know that my bot lane is autofilled, and I'm against an autofield player, I need to be the one carrying this game. So how can we force plays to happen? So let's check out what happens this landing phase. Honestly, I've forgotten. So against Camille, uh, if they waste their passive, you can trade level one. Otherwise, you're just building Fury and getting the second wave into turret. Okay, well, I mean, this guy looked to fight me, right? So this is step one to being an autofill player is uh, if they try to fight you, but you're just a better player, you can just kill them. So against an autofilled player, like this should be the result like every time. Also, that I mean, he started corrupting pot and was fighting me, and so yeah, you know what, whatever. 
He, like, he's auto-filled, he's gonna make mistakes like that. You have to put yourself in a position, a position to punish them. Now, let's watch what I do afterwards. So, <laughs> both teams knowing that top lane is auto-filled. I see my jungler is coming. I... I intentionally bait myself into thinking that I'm taking a bad, like, bait the opponent to think I'm taking a bad trade. He ease into me, and we kill him. In this particular case, I would have liked it better if my Trundle didn't take my full wave. He actually attacks me really hard here. What I could have done instead, the jungler leaves the lane instantly. And I let the lane freeze back to me. And, you know, we just keep the, the lane in a position where it's constantly pushing back. But, you know, my jungler, you know, he's he's looking to pop off. He's 2-0. He attacks a full wave. And he's pretty far ahead of a Kha'Zix. Which is pretty important. Pretty important. A little bit ahead in EXP and definitely ahead in gold. So gold. Kha'Zix has 1,500. I don't know, it's like 1900. So as you can notice, um, I'm making sure the wave shoves to me. I'm trying to get the wave in a position where I can look to all in the Camille. Uh, Camille has a couple of disadvantages in this particular matchup. One disadvantage she has is if the lane gets to about right here, her way to escape is she has to walk back until she's in range of this wall. So I want to get the, the lane to about right here so that if I trade with her, she's either one, forced to trade with me, or two, she has to take a little bit of my abuse as she walks back to this wall. Yep, so I'm keeping the lane here. An aggressive freeze is an extremely good way to punish an auto-filled player. Or just like punish in general against a player that you're ahead of. So, the lane's pushing to me. The Camille got chunked out. The lane's in a really bad position for her, and I'm going to keep this freeze as long as possible. In this particular spot, I decide to break the freeze and slow push the lane. Because I have gold for Tiamat, and I want to slow push the lane so I can buy Tiamat. And potentially Berserker Greaves. Also, since I'm level 6 and the Camille's level 5, when I slow push this under turret, I do have the option to dive her. So, I have the option to dive her, but I chose to take uh, the safer approach. And I can go back and buy Tiamat and Berserker Greaves. As is my current build. The biggest reason why Tima is one of the strongest items to get on Trainer right now is this particular situation. You shove in the lane. The the Camille, she wants to shove this in as fast as possible. Because I slow push such a big wave, she has to push not only this wave, but the next wave too in order to get all the way into turret. So uh, you know, as as good as this is, like, a situation with the Camille, she's still pushing a turret. In this case, she actually just backs and lets herself lose as much EXP as possible. This is bad. This is, uh, yeah, she shouldn't do this. She should push this until her bot lane rotates top. But, uh, I end up giving my bot lane a lot of the EXP and let them catch back in the game because their bot lane got pretty far ahead. So, 
if it was me, I would like to have uh, not done that and taken this way for myself, but you can't always get what you want in the solo queue, especially when you're playing in Challenger. But yeah, this is, uh, so it's past leaning phase, like the rotation already happened at the top. And yeah, I punish the autofill player as much as possible. Let me, let me see if I can find another example on my OPGG. Maybe, an ex let me see if I can find an example on OPGG where I'm playing as an autofill player. Where they're playing a tank. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> um. Is the sign autofilled? No, he's top lane main. Okay, I just destroyed him. I can't use any of those replays. Let me check my other accounts in a second. Mm. I mean, most people aren't playing tanks. Most people like, I mean, that's Shin Shin playing Kane top. Uh, one sec, I'm just looking through my accounts to see if I've played against an autofield player playing top recently. Uh, yeah, most people who are autofield haven't really picked tank tops. Okay, what about this game? This game only lasted 19 minutes, so we won pretty fast. It was a sign on top. Is this guy autofield? No, he's not. Dang, have I really not played against an autofill tank top? Well, anyways, uh, you know, I'm looking through my accounts. It doesn't seem that I've played against an autofill tank player top, but they've picked, like, other stuff into me. But essentially, when uh, you're playing against an autofill player tank, like, tank top, and they're just playing really safe, you want to get perfect CS. You want to take enemy jungle camps. You want to pressure the turret as much as you can. So even if they're not getting, putting themselves in a position to dive, uh, you can get turret damage, get perfect farm, and maybe roam, make some plays, out macro them, and just be the smarter player. But yeah, I, I, showed, you, I showed you at least one example of playing a Sotafield player. The stuff we could do with wave manipulation, you know, freezing the wave on them, putting yourself in good spots to trade, and... Eventually, just like hitting a snowball. So, that is that concludes my section on punishing autofield players. Uh, the next thing is the next part I want to tell you about in this guide is uh, where I'm I'm going to be talking at you a little bit and just talking about strategy in the game. So, uh, for this uh, for this portion, uh, you know those of you guys who have come to this timestamp on my YouTube video, or have just watched the video up until now, or those of you guys who are watching me live on Twitch, we are now going to be talking about the idea of a win condition. Knowing your win condition when going into a game is extremely important, and sometimes the win condition changes as the game goes on, as, like, situations arise. Uh... So I want to make sure that I I kind of go over uh, playing to your win condition. <clears throat> the first the first thing you got to recognize about your, about playing to your win condition is uh, just taking a look at the team comps. So let's take a look at my challenger account. <clears throat> let's see here. Boom. All right. So, some t like in Challenger, sometimes my win condition is a certain player, since I know they're really good. But if you guys are not Challenger or Master, which majority of you are not, 
then it's mostly based off team compositions. And playing across your strengths in a particular game against, you know, uh, maybe you can take apart their weaknesses. So, let's take a look at this game. This game, I was auto-filled Kled. I, like, I do play a bunch of Kled. You know, I've got three games on him this season. Uh, last season, I had, uh, what, six Kled games? So, I have played Kled before. But, you know, I'm a Trinmere one trick, right? So I'm, I'm mostly just playing Trinmere. In this game, my win condition was playing around my fed bot lane. I, I can pull the game up here. But essentially, I, I, made my, I made sure that in this game, I stopped the Fiora. And then tried to out-rotate her macro-wise to group with my team and play around my bot lane. We have Galio, Morgana, a Fed Caitlyn, all being able to peel her. And basically me, if we need a hard engage with Rengar, or my secondary job is to stop Fiora split pushing. Those those were my win that was my win condition. And even though I didn't do well like solo, because uh, I'm playing against Dokla, who is a very good Fiora player. He's uh, he plays for Optic, obviously a pro player is very good. I played to my win condition as best as I physically could. So, even though I I personally didn't have a huge impact in the game, playing to the win condition is what won me that game. If I had constantly just tried to look for 1v1s on the Fiora, I would have lost. Fiora is a straight counter to Kled, if you don't know the matchup. It is very hard for the Kled to do anything in this matchup. Uh, Fjord just does way too much damage and kind of counters Kled's kit. Pretty much in every way possible. In early game, mid game, and late game. So the only thing I can focus on is uh, out rotating and being able to group with my team well. In this game, uh, I, it was in a good spot because my bot lane did win, so I could play around them effectively. So I made my decision to play around my bot lane once I saw my bot lane got a lead. So, it's kind of like how the win condition changes throughout the game. Uh, let me see here. Alright. Next thing I want to, like, next game I want to talk about is, uh, uh, let's see. I'll make it out of this one. Yeah, this one. Alright. Next game I want to talk about. Mm, okay. Nice game, right? I had error on my team. Uh, basically, I got super fed against Sneak. Like, look at their team. They have Heaven Time, Sneaky, and Sanity. They have Hi, I'm Johnny. But, <clears throat> if we take a look at this guy. This guy was plat 1 when I played him. As you can see from, like, actually he's unranked, right? This guy transferred from the land server to ruin the NA players games. So he's probably challenger on LAN, but he's just, I mean, he's probably MMR abusing to 50-50 uh, to his way to Diamond 3 on the NA server. Some people do that. This guy isn't the best player. So I took advantage of that, and I completely dumpstered him in lane, and my team played around my split push, uh, I made sure to make plays off the split push. I made, you know, if you guys want to go back to my complete guide to split pushing, I followed those tips pretty much perfectly in this game. And I also have a YouTube video of it. If you go to my YouTube, oh wait, it's not out yet. <laughs> Shh, that was a spoiler. But my next, my next video on YouTube will be this game. So you guys can watch that there. But yeah, basically my, the win condition for our team was me. My split push and my team playing around it to force objectives while they had to bring multiple people to me. And oftentimes that's the biggest, like, that's the most common win condition you're going to encounter when you're playing Trinmere. Uh, let's see. Alright, this game. <laughs> I played really bad, right? So I went 0-7. I got beaten up by, uh, by Camille. Uh, who completely outplayed me this game. But... 
What did I do? I kept the Camille in lane with me as much as possible, looked to not die, and played around my, my fed team as much as possible. So in this game, it's one of the rare occurrences where I, I completely struggled in lane, and I really messed up. I made pretty big mistakes. But since I played to my win condition, and I didn't just like run it down or like griefed, I you know played around my team pretty well and allowed them to carry me. Sometimes that's the win condition. Or you get games like uh, let's see, was it this game where it's kind of close? Hold up. There's a game up here that was kind of close. I want to say it's this one. Oh, yeah, th this one we took a look at earlier. So, obviously, their, Ez like, their Ezreal did really well. Their bot lane was completely destroying mine. So, I won I actually won a game where my bot lane was 1-4 and, and theirs was 6-1-10, and 10, just completely, like, 1v9. Uh, so we played around me and Aurelian Souls Pressure uh, to try to, you know, carry this game. So if we want, let me go ahead and take a look at this game now so I can show you guys some situations where I'm looking to play towards my win condition. So I went 11-3-5 and five this game. Let me pull up the replay. Is getting dragons ever a win condition? It can be. You know, if you like looking to get triple infernal, is going to be a pretty big win condition in a lot of games if that opportunity arises. Or, you know, looking to split push bottom to allow your team to get barren, that's also a win condition. <clears throat> so, big one we're going to be talking about this game is my. Let's go to like 18 minutes. So, in this game. My win condition is playing around me. I'm a 315 Trinmere. I'm really fed. The Kled is 170. I completely destroy him in the split push. So, what my team needs to do is either draw pressure to them, or I need to be patient enough to wait for my team to be in a position of pressure. Before I make a move. So in this particular spot in the game. I can 1v2 the, both the Kled and the Nocturne. So the only people I have to watch out for. Let me let me go and only show my side. Only people I have to watch out for is. Getting rotated on basically by their bot lane. Before my team is in a position to pressure Baron or, or turret. So, I see three mid. I saw a Nocturne rotate over towards mid. So, I look for a play on the Kled. I whittle him down. And I basically push him off turret. So, you know, I push my lane off turret. Uh, I couldn't 1v1 him. I, I couldn't kill him. I couldn't get damage on turret. Well, I got as much damage as I could. I'm waiting for the next wave to come up. I, I warded. I'm looking for jungle camps. I'm doing all the stuff that you need to do as a split pusher. So we already saw this play earlier. Uh, in this guide. But essentially we're just... Uh, uh, trying to get as much pressure... As we can while my team is playing around us with push. As you notice, my team is getting pretty good burn control. They, we got the Skullwork Crab. Uh, we got some wards. And we actually got a pick on Janna. Just really important that I start pressuring the Kled during this time. So I'm shoving out as quickly as possible. And I'm going to pressure... Top on my team, pressure's mid. And you see how... I think this is me. Oh, no, it's a Soraka calling for assistance on Baron. 
Because I'm pressuring bottom, and we want to put pressure on Baron. Baron is how we're going to win this game. So the way that my team as a whole plays around the win condition of getting Baron, allow me to draw pressure bottom, and we look to get picks around Baron. Let's take a look at here. So you see, see, like my team isn't doing Baron, but they're looking to get picks since we know we've denied vision. So, uh, we make Baron Bait. We get a pick on Janna. Oh, wait, no, we don't. Anyways, we force Clyde off turret. But yeah. Essentially, like, that's what you kind of have to do rinse and repeat. Alright, guys. <clears throat> How to 1 versus 9. That will be the next step in our guide. If you have skipped to this timestamp and uh, the and the timestamps below on YouTube or you just have watched this point, welcome. This is how to one versus nine. And if you're watching on Twitch, you know, be prepared because I'm about to give you uh, you know, the the one thing to combine everything all together to one versus nine a game. So if you have a $25 sub. Uh, to my Twitch channel, please spam Fog Carry for this portion. So that's all I want to see is Fog Carry. So I don't know how many of you guys have the $25 sub here in chat, but go ahead and uh, start spamming that as much as possible. Not many people have it. If you have the luxury of doing it, go ahead and do it. But, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and talk about how to win versus nine. Here's the situation. You're 3-0 and in lane. You're crushing your opponent. I don't care who the opponent is, but you're crushing them. Your bot lane's losing. Your jungle's behind. Your mid lane's behind. How, how do we carry this game? Everyone's behind, but the, we're the only person that's fed? How do we win this game? Well, my friends... This, uh, this is what separates the, uh, you know, the people who can carry from the people who can't carry. The number one tip to one versus nine carry a game is every mistake that you make will make the game five times harder. So to effectively one versus nine a game, you cannot make a single mistake. Whether with your macro, your positioning on the map, or mechanically when you're dueling in lane. Number two, you have to play to your win condition. 100%. So we just talked about playing to a win condition. You have to, have to, have to play your win condition. If your win condition is getting your team back in the game... By taking objectives or stalling out the game and not allowing the enemy team to win as long as possible. That's what you have to do. So, here's, here's the situation. It, it's, 20, it's 22 minutes in the game, let's say. Baron is up. Your team can't even 4v5 the Baron. Your team goes in 4v5 versus Baron to try to stop them at Baron. They can't do it. The decision you need to make there, you need to be there at the Baron. And you need to stall out the game. You know, give your give your teammates some time to catch up in gold. That way that can at least do a little bit of something to allow you to split push effectively. Yes, you can't die. If you want a 1v9, you cannot die. You cannot make a mistake. Exactly. No, that's 100% that's correct. To effectively 1 versus 9, can't make mistakes, you need to play your win condition. Number 3, you need to absolutely outplay your opponents. Not, no, not only mechanically, but out macroing your opponents too. Trinmere has a special ability... 
Trinmere can draw pressure to him and not die, whether because it's it's insane mobility because of his spin, or the fact that potentially if they send two people at you, you could actually kill both people and keep on and keep on going. You have to use your brain. So remember the basic macro tips we're talking about. We have to play the map very well. You have to know your limits on the champion. You have to see us perfectly. Like manipulating the waves. Like across the map. Letting top lane slow push while you push out bottom. So that they have to have a person top and a person mid. Send your team... Or, and, and, while you're, and a person bot while you're bottom. Then send your team mid. And you have to have the mindset. So tip number three to one versus nine. You have to have the mindset that you are the only person that can carry this game. Your teammates are useless. They're irrelevant. You cannot rely on them for everything, for anything. You have to take all the resources. Red buff, blue buff, they're yours. That, that fat wave bottom, that's yours. You need to take it. Don't give your teammates anything. You need to take everything. Because you are the only person. Trindamir has an insane ability to stall out games by split pushing effectively. And if they group five man mid, you need to be fed enough where you can one shot carries. Install the game out enough to where you get your item spikes, you one-shot carries, and you prevent them from taking in hibs. If you make mistakes, it absolutely cannot happen. And I'm, I'm just going to have this as a bonus tip. One versus nine will not always happen. Sometimes your team just fell too far behind, and you just cannot carry the game. It's not very often, but that can happen. But the biggest thing here is you want to put yourself in the best position to carry every single game that you play of League of Legends. Have the biggest impact that you can in the game and put yourself in the best position to carry. You will not always win. You won't always win. But you can always put yourself in the best position to carry and... You know, knowing that full well, having the mindset to one versus nine, and playing well, playing the map well, mechanically well, you know, getting that lead in lane that you need to, right? This all makes uh, playing your win condition all makes a big difference. So that is that that those are my tips that you need to take to heart. It combines everything that we've learned in this guide, the beginners, the intermediate, and the advanced guide all put together. Put all the, the tips and tricks. You know, put the, uh, uh, the, wave, the wave management, uh, macro play, uh, just mechanics with Trainer in general, and it will give you the best possible scenario to be able to like solo carry a game <clears throat> all right guys now but now we've gone to this part we we've we've gone over how to one versus nine how to put yourself in the best position to carry this <clears throat> is the most iconic point in the video and if you have skipped to this timestamp you have done so well my friend Let me, let me show you. There are no words to be spoken. You guys just need to watch what is about to happen. I'm going to show you two different Trinomir players. In about 30 seconds. <clears throat> I 
There is the Trindamere player with fantastic mouse control, fantastic screen control, good wave management. But can that really make him the best Trindamere on Earth in the world? It's not just that. What is the key difference between the player I just described and me? The best player in the world on Trindamere. Let me show you. This is your normal average Trindamere. That is your normal average Trindamere. Now, let me take you even further beyond to the place where only gods shall live. Spin laugh, baby. Let's go. If you spin and you're not laughing, you're not taking the BM to the furthest extent you possibly can. You not only have to show your mastery of Trindamere with your gameplay, but also the fact that you can BM in their face 24-7. I never have and never will fail to not spin laugh because I will always be on my opponents. I always play like I'm the best player on the Rift. <clears throat> and that concludes... The Complete Guide to Trindamere. <laughs> you never right stood there. a chance.